Previously on tracking and managing your inventory with QuickBooks Online. But for the sake of today's example and so that you can get a good foundation in understanding how to track and manage your inventory, how it all flows from one place to another in the bookkeeping, we're going to keep it simple. We're going to assume we buy a product uh, from a supplier and then we sell it to the world. We have some exciting stuff going on. We've got a sale and now we've got the 137.50 that came out of inventory, right? This came out of here and it went into here to cost of goods sold. So now we want to take a look at how that cost of goods sold was calculated. How do we get 137.50 in cost of goods sold? Well, I mapped it out for you here. Here were the original purchases. We bought 25 of them at 450 for a total of 112.50, another 75 at 5 for a total of 375. So initially, our inventory valuation was $100 at an average cost of 488, and for a grand total of 4750. Then we have the sale. I sold 25 of them at 450 for the whole 11250 from the first lot, and then five of them at five dollars for another 25 dollars comes to 13750. Knowledge is power. Make an impact by learning more or hire us to do it for you. Let us focus on what we do best so you can stay focused on what you do best. Find all of our options under services, one-to-one -one training, subscription-based training, or accounting and business consulting. Analyzing inventory in QuickBooks Online. If you haven't already, you should check the previous video called Tracking and Managing Your Inventory in QuickBooks Online. It's sort of the precursor to this. Because once we understand how to track and manage inventory in QuickBooks Online, which in simple terms mean we understand how it works when we buy inventory, where that goes, when we sell inventory, how that gets transferred from inventory to cost that gets sold, and how the sale gets recorded, and how we arrive at the gross profit from that. Those are the basics of managing and tracking inventory. Once we have that down, we can start looking at some reports. We can start analyzing inventory in QuickBooks Online. And there's two reports I want to go over with you here, and I want to go over the reports and how I run them and how I analyze them. So the first one is called the Inventory Evaluation Summary. So if we go over here to Reports, you're going to find that I've started it and put it right up here. Um, but if you're looking for it, you can certainly type it up here. But I'm also a big fan of using the browser search, Control F. I'm in Firefox here, so you'll notice here, if I type in my search valuation, it's going to find this one here. But if that wasn't here, it would find it down here. And notice here's where I started off. And I also started off the other one that we're going to look at called the Sales by Product or Service Summary. Okay, so just a quick little, you know, housekeeping on how to get those reports up top. These are generally the reports that I will have on top for my e-commerce clients because this is the stuff I usually want to be able to look at frequently and quickly, right? So let's take a look at the inventory valuation summary. Now, on this sample company, it's going to be very slim, right? Because we just have the one product that we recorded transactions for in the previous video. So I prepared, a, you know, a, a sample uh, with more data based on the export. But b what you would do is run this report and then export it to Excel. For me, once I've got it in Excel, I'm going to convert it to Google Sheets. And so here's an example of an inventory valuation summary report with a bunch of products on it, right? Now, what do I do? I'm going to first sort this by quantity. So you know, when you first export it, there might be some cleanup you'll need to do on some of the stuff. Depending on how your, uh, your product and service list is set up, you may get some stuff in here that's sort of irrelevant. So you'll want to remove those lines and that kind of thing. Um, so it may not look perfect like this does. Not that this is 100% perfect, but you get my point. So the first thing we're going to want to do is sort it by quantity. So I'll go to data, and I want to sort range, right? I want to confirm I've got a header row and confirm quantity smallest to largest, right? Sort. And so what that does is it shows me, first of all, the products that have negative quantities, right? So going back to the top of the list, I want to take a look at these. This could be a number of things, right? It could be that I've got uh, a missing purchases of those products. Maybe I forgot to convert the POs to a bill. So this is, first of all, the cleanup work I need to do when I first run this report each week or each month, however often I do it. I recommend the more often the better, right? Um, in this particular case where this data came from, 
I can tell you what this is in most cases. It's because we sell kits and we're managing the kits a bit manually in QuickBooks Online. So what it means is that you can see this, you know, I changed letters around to make it not too obvious, you know, what this all is based on, you know, it's based on an actual client's file. But you can see this was a pack of six. So we have to make an adjustment that pulls from the uh, individual items quantities and moves 530 items over to the six pack, right, to zero this out. That might be the case for you or it might be something else. Either way, there's cleanup that needs to be done and this is the first place to go to look for what needs to be cleaned up, okay? The next thing is the zero, the zero quantity items, right? And if you're analyzing and you know that these are in fact supposed to be zero quantities, if, it, if you look at this as the business owner and say, yeah, that makes sense. I know I don't have stock in any of these items, then get them out of here. Okay, so now we're going to go straight down to the zero dollar items. Right, shift page down a few times until I get to the ones that have positive quantities. Shift space bar, shift space bar again to highlight the entirety of these rows. And again, this is assuming you've done the analysis and confirmed that these are all items that you actually don't have in stock. And then get rid of those. So now we're dealing with the negative quantities, which is the cleanup work, right? Then I want to drop down to the bottom here and look and see which of the items that I have a ton of quantities in. Right. First and foremost. And once again, I want to make sure I want to ask myself and as the accountant, I wouldn't know this. The business owner really has to be the one to look at this with me and say, yes, that, that makes sense that we have these items, you know, this much of this item in stock. And I might say, OK, well, you have a lot of these in stock. Are we going to blow through these or is this a problem? Do we you know, do we have a problem here? Because that's what you're looking for also is are we running the risk of overstock? Right. Because if we are, then we might have to do some promotions or do something to blow this inventory out. Plus, we can always improve cash flow. The more you can sell off inventory, that's always a way to improve, improve cash flow. So long as you're not, you know, uh, you know, selling it at a at a loss, right? You know, in other words, if you're selling it at a loss just to get it sold, you only do that if it's to recover and and get something for it because you figure otherwise it's not going to sell at all and just you're cutting your losses at that point. Hopefully you catch this a lot sooner. If you do this kind of analysis regularly, you should be able to catch it a lot sooner. But that's really the last piece of this analysis is you're working from the, you know, sort of the, the bottom back up, so to speak. And looking at a, does it make sense? You know, do these quantities having these items in this much, you know, this much in stock, does that make sense? And B, does this represent a problem? Is this something we need to get on top of? Do we need to start looking at how to sell through these items, right? So you're looking at this from two perspectives. Is it accurate? Does it look reasonable? And do we need to be concerned about it, right? So that's the inventory valuation summary, and that's a quick few minutes on how to uh, analyze it. Right. So going back to the books, the other report we want to look at is the sales by product or service summary, which, again, I've pinned up here. You can also search for it this way or in the browser and you'll find it sales by product or service detail. Right. Product. Uh, let's go down. And here it is. It's all under sales and customers. Right. Sales by product or service detail. And summary, I look at the summary actually, is the one that I like to look at. Um, and you can look at the detail next, but the detail is going to have every single transaction. So just be aware of that. So when I run this one, again, in the sample company, and we got to mind our dates, it's not going to have much data here because it's only the one item that I ran transactions for, right? So I, again, I've given you an example that we can look at here from my client's company with uh, the letters changed around. So it's not totally obvious what we're actually looking at here. So first thing we want to do here, uh, we want to add the column to the right that gives you average cost goods sold per unit. If you look at QuickBooks, it doesn't give you that, right? And it's useful information. My client asked me for it. I said, of course, it's very easy to calculate. We're simply going to take the cost of goods sold, which is the total cost of goods sold for the total quantity sold, and divide that by the quantity to get the average cost of goods sold per unit. This is just to do a reasonableness test. Again, something the business owner would know I wouldn't, that this item should be costing around 40 bucks per unit, right? That's what we want to uh, check on. It's a way of checking to make sure that things are accurate. Otherwise, I could be missing something important or something could be misclassified. That's kind of what we're looking for here, okay? The next thing we want to do is we want to sort by quantity. So we're going to sort range. Again, confirm it's got a header row, quantity, sort. And I already did this, obviously, and I took the time to color code some things. And this is what I do for our e-commerce clients. So we look, and clearly this is the item that sold the most, 
right? And it's got a decent profit margin in it. But that's not the end of the picture here, right? And we can look at the second most sold. But what we're next looking for is, are there items here up above, and I've already highly highlighted examples of this, that, are, that have a higher profit margin, a higher gross margin percentage, but aren't selling as much volume. So we want to sort by the gross margin percentage next, right? And I just quickly use the keyboard shortcut, Alt-D-S, to get that quickly. And when I do it that way, you'll notice my top selling item is not the one with the highest profit margin percentage, the highest gross margin percentage. And I've highlighted two of the ones that I looked at and said, you know, these look like ones we could easily be selling more of. You know, they're a useful enough item, let's put it that way, you know, for lack of a better way to put it, that we could generate a lot more sales on these, I think. It could be just improving our SEO um, and other things, advertising, whatever we do in Amazon and elsewhere to promote the sales of these items, we should be doing because more sales of these items will send more money right to the bottom line for the company, right? And this is how, as a CFO, I analyze this stuff for clients. We want to be able to look at this stuff because these are kind of the low-hanging fruit. These are the things that I can go back to my client and say, hey, let's sell more of these. Let's figure out what we need to do to sell more of these because these are the items that are going to, with the same effort, they generate a lot more dollars of profit because they have a greater profit margin in them. Pretty straightforward, basic common sense stuff, right? And that, my friends, is your start at how to analyze your inventory. Obviously, there's a lot more to look at. We can go a lot deeper. But this is just to get you started and get you thinking. So consider this. Let me ask you a question. What other information would you like to know about your product sales? Contact me, comment on the video or the blog post if you happen to be on blog, and maybe we'll do an, a video. And if you'd like us to, we can mention your company, give you credit, help you promote a little bit, but also answer your questions as to how to get other kinds of analysis out of the data that you have in QuickBooks Online. That, my friends, is it on analyzing inventory in QuickBooks Online. As always, I hope you learned something here, had some fun along the way. I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day, and I look forward to seeing you on the web.